everybody, thank you for joining us for the first annual Real Girls Film Festival. My name is Sophie Zavodsky, I'm the founder of the festival, and I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone who submitted. Starting the festival, I thought I was going to only receive at most 50 submissions, but you guys surprised me, and I ended up receiving over 400 fantastic, exciting, and unique films by young women all around the world. So, a huge thank you. Real Girls is a space where aspiring female filmmakers can submit their films to a supportive environment, find like-minded peers, and meet inspiring role models. This was important to me because I found that not many festivals celebrate the visions of young female filmmakers, at least not to this extent. We needed a space of our own. My hope as the festival continues to grow is that our filmmakers reach out to each other, make friends, and collaborate. And that way, after the festival this week, we can continue together, creating a strong sense of community. I also hope that you guys continue making and sharing your films. Your visions need to be seen. Now, we have a message from our judge. The judge for the 15 through 19 animation category is Naomi McDougall Jones, an award-winning filmmaker, actress, author, speaker, and woman in film activist. Taking home 12 awards, including four Best Pictures, and for Naomi, three Best Actress Awards, and the Dawn Award for Independently Produced Screenplay 2014, Naomi produced, wrote, and starred in the indie feature film Imagine I'm Beautiful. The film was named as number eight of Oscar World's top 10 films of 2014 and was distributed theatrically and digitally by Candy Factory Films. After, she went on to make her second feature film, Bite Me which premiered at CineQuest and won Best Feature Film at VTX IFF and then journeyed across America on the Joyful Vampire Tour of America in summer 2019. Later, Naomi gave her thought-provoking TED Talk, viewed by millions around the world, what it's like to be a woman in Hollywood. Her talk advocated for bringing gender equality to film, both on and off the screen. Recently, Naomi published her first book, The Wrong Kind of Woman, Inside a Revolution to Dismantle the Gods of Hollywood, debuting as the number one release on Amazon and in the entertainment industry, and then receiving an electric response for viewers from Booklist and Kirkus Reviews, calling it bold, convincing, passionate, well-written, urgent, and necessary, and Publishers Weekly writing, film viewing will never be the same after reading Jones's insightful look at the reality of being female in Tinseltown. Rose McGowan said the book, we need truth, the, cert the curtain must be pulled back, and Naomi McDougall Jones has done just that. It has been featured in The Atlantic, The Washington Post, NPR, BBC, Playboy, MS Magazine, Salon.com, among many other national and international media outlets. Please welcome Naomi McDougall Jones. Hello, Real Girls. I'm Naomi McDougall Jones, and it was such an honor to get to watch so many of your wonderful films and be a judge in this year's film festival for Real Girls Film Festival. And I just want to say how excited I was to see so many of your stories and so much of your great work. And I just want to tell you to please, please keep making movies and telling your stories for the rest of your lives. I want you to think about something. If you've watched primarily uh, US or North American movies in your lifetime, 95% of all of the films that you've ever seen were directed by men and overwhelmingly white men. 80 to 90% of all of the leading characters that you've ever seen in a movie were men and overwhelmingly white men. And 55% of the time that you have seen a female character on screen, she was naked or scantily clad. So I'm telling you <laughs> that the world desperately, desperately needs to see and hear your stories. So if as you grow up, you become a filmmaker, which I hope you will, or you get involved in any way in the film and television industry, or you become a storyteller in a different medium. I hope you will remember this, me saying this for the rest of your lives, which is that we need your stories. And however you can get them made, whether it's inside of Hollywood or outside of Hollywood or just on your iPhone, um, it is your civic ethical and moral <laughs> responsibility to make sure that you tell the stories and get them to the audiences who so, so badly need to hear them. And thank you for sharing them with me first. Thank you for that inspiring message. Now we're going to begin our showcase. After the festival, please head over to our website and vote for Audience Choice Award. These will close um, tomorrow at 12.
Also, um, please tune in to the award ceremony um, on May 29th where the Audience Choice Award and Best and Runner Up for each category will be announced. And also tune in to our other uh, showcases this week.
I'm Detective Jacqueline Horner. Thank you for coming. I just need you to tell me exactly what you remember. Well, I don't remember much after I hit my noggin, but I was sitting on a wall. I didn't know how I ended up there, when suddenly I leaned back and fell. The last thing I heard was the crack of my own self. Thank you, Humpty. You may go. But as Humpty was leaving, I noticed he had a strong and revolting smell that couldn't be mistaken for something else. Most villagers would turn away in disgust at the sight of Mrs. Birdie's peas porridge, whether hot, cold, or in the pot, nine days old. Oh. But I was willing to take my chances to solve this mystery. Please, porridge. Huh? <clears throat> Please, Good porridge afternoon, cold. Mrs. Birdie. Please. Oh. Oh, I suppose you're here to snoop, as usual. <laughs> um, well, I was just wondering if Humpty was in your kitchen yesterday. I don't know why it would matter. I mean, I get tons of customers. Um, well, yes. Huh? And it certainly ain't any of your concern. I'm not out of my kitchen. I'm very sorry to disturb you. A black feather could only mean one thing. The blackbirds were the wildest birds in Nurseryville. They had a reputation for biting noses 
and were quite fond of pie. Luckily, my mother was a good friend of the old woman who lived in the shoe, and she kept them well under control in a large cage in her basement. The question was whether or not she was responsible for letting them loose. Declan Horner! It's just a short visit. Come in! I just would like to know how your blackbirds have been doing. Staying out of mischief? Oh, they have been very well behaved lately. In fact, your mother was here and said she would make them a delicious lemon meringue pie. You know how they love pie. Hello? Ha, huh, it's me. I was wondering, are you still in the business? Meet me in the middle of the forest tonight. Right, thanks. That night, the cow jumped over the moon, and many innocent villagers were fast asleep. Because everyone in Nurseryville knew that somebody in the forest at this time was up to no good. So, when do I get the money? I told you, as soon as I sail tomorrow's porridge. You know this is risky business, right? My porridge business is what's really at risk. This could ruin me. You mean someone could find out you've been selling contaminated porridge? Exactly. No porridge can go to waste, but there's a few people who are involved. Who's there? We better get on with this. So you won't check too, right? Oh, her? Nah. I'm even a better detective than she is. It's true. She's a disappointment to her father. And her poor mother. But I came too late. Right there, I was more determined to solve this mystery than ever. I just want to do the job right, you know? Somebody could be in here. All right, fine, hurry up. So you're sure you heard something? Yeah, I am. Hey, what's over here? I'm sure it's nothing. You're overreacting. Pick a boo. <laughs> you owe me extra for that. All right. I hope there's room in there for one more. <laughs> now no one will get in the way of my business. Jacqueline, mother. If it weren't for that clumsy Humpty Dumpty crashing into my beautiful porridge. Must be so frustrating, Jack. Laying your father down. The helicopter's coming tomorrow. I'm so sorry. You shouldn't blame yourself. It's my fault. Mother, what do you mean? I started this whole case. I was going to make the old woman some lemon meringue pie for her blackbirds when I realized I didn't have any eggs. When the blackbirds noticed, they went out to get me some. Unfortunately, the biggest egg was Humpty Dumpty. No offence. They chased Humpty, who was going on his daily stroll. I couldn't catch up. Mrs. Birdie said that he crashed into a porridge. That's where I found the black feather and footprints. Humpty, is this true? I didn't remember anything. After I fell... I suppose the blackbirds were also the ones who chased him up the wall. I am so sorry. I had no idea. It doesn't matter right now. All that matters is we find out how he's all together in one piece. Perhaps he didn't actually fall off? Oh no, he did. And I have proof. Once I'd finally caught up with the blackbirds, I found Humpty lying on the ground, all together, and these eggshells. I took them and ran away, because I didn't want anyone to know. I'm sorry. I'm a ghost! 
No, Humpty, your hard-boiled egg. After you had fallen into Mrs. Birdie's porridge pot, you boiled. It saved you from breaking. Only your eggshells did. I remember. Now all we needed to do was find a way out. Which did happen, eventually. After the police discovered us, Mrs. Birdie abandoned her kitchen the next morning and was forced to take her business elsewhere. And as for the dish... was because of an egg.
不喝。Thank you so much. Those films are so amazing. Audience Choice Award is now open on our website for the category, so go over there and vote on your favorite film that you just saw. 
um, be sure to tune in to our other screenings this week and um, to our award ceremony on May 29th. Thank you.